Hey folks, and welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. Um, I appreciate the feedback and attention I've gotten recently. Uh, I really do, so thank you guys for that. In today's video, we will be talking about the inversion for Vagap. I have had a lot of people asking me to do a video on this, so that's what we're doing today. Um, and it only makes sense that I've gotten requests on it, because you see me use it a lot on my YouTube channel. I'd say over 50% of my trades are executed on inversion for bag apps so it only makes sense right anyway the inversion for bag app is a really simple concept yet extremely effective when executed correctly okay but i see a lot of new folks lose a lot of money trading the inversion for bag app um but there's a reason for that of course um and you will learn how to trade the inversion for bag app and which inversion for bag apps you should trade and which one you, sh you should avoid um, so firstly, let's, uh, quickly establish what they are. So inversion for bag apps are just a normal for bag app that gets violated or ran through. And what I mean by violated is say we have a bullish for bag app. As soon as a candle closes below that bullish for bag app, that same for bag app now went from being bullish to being bearish. Okay. So it went from being a bullish for bag app to now being a bearish inversion for bag app. And the same with the bearish for bag apps. As soon as a candle closes above a bearish for bag gap, that has now went from a bearish for bag gap to a bullish inversion for bag gap. You could, uh, I guess you could, you could compare it to retail, right? If any of you traded support and resistance, whatever, before you discovered SMC. Um, you know how you were taught to use, uh, or that you could use support levels as resistance when they were traded through? And the same with resistant levels, um, that they could be used as support when traded through. Uh, this is essentially the same concept, but with for bag apps. Okay, so let's go over a few examples of inversion for bag app and establish a few rules that I believe you should follow when uh, trading the inversion for bag app. Okay, so if we look at my screen right now, I'm on NQ and I marked out a, let's start like this. This right here would be your normal ICT for bag app, okay? A bearish one, okay? As you can see, what did we use it as right here? We used the for bag app as resistance, right? We came up into it, pushing price further down, right? So that is just a normal bearish for bag app. But if we extend it, right? Let's say we extend the for bag app here. You could already see what I'm talking about. So firstly, before we violated it here, we used it as a normal for bag app as resistance, right? But then when we violated it, which I told you before, is when we have a candle closure above it. So this candle right here uh, violated the for bag app, now making it inversed. So we went from a bearish for bag app to now a bullish inversion for bag app, which can be seen right here. Now we use it as support when before we used it as resistance right so that is basically what the for bag app is it's just a for bag app that gets violated and retraced back to okay and then used in the opposite direction but this brings me on to my first rule uh you should not be trading the for bag app inversion for bag app sorry uh if you have swept internal structure slash liquidity okay so Let's say we had swept this high before going down here. This inversion for bag app would now be invalidated. Okay. This only worked because we ha hadn't swept the, um, the internal liquidity right here, this high. Okay. So you only trade this whenever we have not swept internal liquidity. Okay. And that is basically the first rule. And it's a very, very important one. You should not be trading this had we swept this high, okay? So had we came up, had we done this instead, right? right? Let's say we had it here, just to simplify it. Let's say price had done this, come up here, and then down here, and then like this. And I don't even care if it worked, right? You should not be doing this because the probability of it working is just not worth it, okay? So, but had we done this, that would have been fine, right? Because we had not swept internal liquidity yet, okay? 
So this is perfect because we have not swept any liquidity yet. I hope you understand. So let's go to a bearish example now. Uh, I found one over here that made sense. That was kind of easy to showcase. Let me see if I can find it right here. Okay. So again, we have a bullish for bag up here, right? That is meant to be used as support. So price is meant to do this, come down, right? Come down and then go up, right? That would be a normal bullish for bag up. But what we did instead is violate it, right? This candle right here, right? Violated the bullish for bag up, now making the bullish for bag up and a bearish inverse for bag up. Okay. And we had our entry before sweeping this low right here. This will be internal liquidity. So we only entered this because price came back up, up into the inversion for bag gap before sweeping this low here. Okay. And that is a bearish example, right? We violate a bullish for bag gap, now making it a bearish inverse for bag gap before we have swept um, internal liquidity, right? So this is a perfect setup. Of course, if you've seen me before, um, I would need a some sort of higher time frame PDRA up here in order to enter off of this. I don't just enter anything. I need a higher time frame PDRA delivery. Okay, but that's a whole nother video. So this brings me on to my second rule. This is a rule I learned from another content creator. His name is Dodges DD. Uh, he's a very good trader and he trades the inversion for bag up too. So what this rule basically is, is that you only want to be trading inversion for bag gaps when there is a single, a single inversion for bag gap in the leg or a single for bag gap in that leg. So as you can see, this will be the leg that we're trading and there's only one for bag gap, right? And what this does is that it clears out any confusion on which, which for bag gaps to take, which, which ones to avoid, etc. right? If there's only one, you could take it. If there's more than one, don't take it, okay? However, I will say with screen time, you can start to take, lay, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, legs that have multiple for Vegas in them. If we go back to the first example that I showed you, uh, let me find it real quick. Did I delete this stuff? It was right here, okay. So if you, I don't know if you noticed, but there is a for bag up here, right? But then there is one more up here, right? You see, so this would not be one you would take, but I am fine with taking uh, inversion for bag gaps, even if there's more than one in the leg, if it's far enough uh, away from my entry, um, because then I could use that second for bag gap as my break even point or a partial point. Um, so yeah, if there's more than one, it needs to be far enough away for me to be comfortable moving my stop to break even or taking partials at that second for bag gap. And with uh, screen time and experience, you could kind of start to. Um, I guess predict which for bag gaps are going to get inverse and which ones not to. But in the beginning, I would just suggest just trading the inversion for bag gap if there's only one. So that was the inversion for bag gap video. I hope you enjoyed and uh, I hope you learned what it is. It's fairly simple. Uh, it gets a little more complicated once you apply the rules, but uh, the win rate of it also increases drastically. So. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.